everybody. We're working on a 220, which is a, an S-Class from the years 2000 to 2006. And this one is a 2000 or a 2001. And the client had the car sitting for a while. He is uh, looking to restore it, bring it back up so he can use it. And um, he had a few electrical issues. Uh, we already fixed the suspension. The suspension had an issue with the valve block and one of the shocks were leaking. So now that that's repaired, uh, he's looking to move on to phase two, which is to fix the electrical. Now, uh, right here, this is the back of the um, this is the back of the S-Class. This is the, the rear seat removed. I have it sitting up here. And once you get under there, there's a rear SAM. That's where a lot of the power distribution is sent through the vehicle. Uh, so first thing we did was check power because we have a code that well, we have a, a no communication with the rear SAM and the right front SAM. So the we check power at this wire here. I have it covered with a rubber glove so it doesn't arc anything. And um, that had power. Uh, next thing we did was check the uh, pull the pull the SAM out. This is the rear SAM. Um, unplugged everything, and it looked like a lot of the wiring was uh, had had some corrosion on it. So what I did was I separated the rear SAM, which is this part here. That, that it's like a cartridge that slides into here, and you could see all the corrosion. I mean, you can see the plastic is all melted. So it definitely um, got wet and uh, started to to warp and arc and you know cause all kinds of problems. I mean, you could clearly see the rust. I just wasn't sure if this was a problem from a while ago because I saw some rust on the body at the bottom. I kind of see a peak of it there. So I wasn't sure if that was old, old damage because it is an older vehicle and uh, getting water leaks in the back here was pretty common. So I wasn't sure if it was fixed before and, and he's having a different issue or if it was in fact a water issue. So, I mean, this is probably the worst I've seen. It completely uh, melted the, the SAM, the, the actual module side of the SAM, and um, it smells it smells pretty burnt. So, uh, we're gonna have to replace that SAM module and also this part, which is the, uh, the fuse box. That's where the relays and all the, the fuses pl actually plug into and you know, pass the power to the, to the relay module. So we need to start with those two things. And um, he's also having an issue with the front SAM, so let's take a look over there. All right, now we're in the front, the front right of the vehicle, and this is the fuse box area for the right front SAM. I've already taken this one apart. Now, so far I don't see any corrosion like we did on the other one, but I do see a little bit of warpage on the plastic, so it looks like something might have started to get hot there. Um, also, the, when I took the fuses and the relays out, they were um, they were definitely starting to discolor. If you can see them, they're discoloring a little bit. So I think something is getting hot still in here. Um, they, they're, they're really I don't see any signs of corrosion. So we could try to put this back and, and see what happens once we replace the rear SAM and um, check maybe there's a wire or some other issue going on. But um, w the reason that he's having the issue with the SAM is, it's hard to see, I don't have a flashlight with me at the moment, but at the bottom of this uh, compartment, there's a, a little valve called a reed valve, and it just allows water to, to drain from the, from the hood area and the windshield. And anything that comes down that area goes out of the bottom of the car. If you let the car sit, you see all the leaves all over the car. The more you let it sit, the more this uh, debris collects. It falls through here into this comp compartment, and the debris starts to cake up into like a mud or a clay, and it just clogs that whole reed valve. Once the water fills up, it'll go up and over into the uh, blower motor area. So he's probably gonna need a blower motor too, and it runs underneath the seat. Once it runs under the seat, you give it gas, or if the car is on a slight incline, and the water is gonna get underneath this carpet and follow its way underneath and into here. It's mounted flush with the floor. So uh, I've already lifted this carpet and felt underneath and there's definitely water under there. So it's still wet, it's been wet. Um, we're gonna, to do it properly, we have to remove all the seats and get the um, carpets out, let them dry at, at a minimum. But I'm sure this water's been sitting there for a while this car looks like it's been sitting and um, 
Once we dry everything out, you should be replacing them, but that's the client's choice if he wants to replace the carpets or just um, dry them out and reuse them. Uh, we'll put some, you know, spray some anti-mold uh, spray and do the best we can. But, um, I mean, I would, I, I would replace the carpets unless this is a recent leak that just happened and I knew I was taking the carpets out fresh, drying them out in the sun, putting them back. But if it's been there for a, a month or a few months, not, not necessarily the best idea. Um, but anyways, this is uh, where we're at. And uh, we're going to send this video to the client so he has a little bit of an update. And we'll see where he wants to go from here. All right. Um, take care.